Okay, so over the last couple of topics, we've been talking about finding the area between curves, between two functions. And it's always been kind of a very nice clean cut area. Uh, in this particular topic, what we're going to look at is maybe where the functions intersect at more than two points, where they may be kind of uh, weave in and out of each other, intersect at multiple values. How do we find the area bound between those uh, two functions? So let's just do a quick little review of curves that intersect at exactly two points and we'll use integrals. So if we wanted to find the area of the region bound by the functions x squared minus four and negative x squared plus four, we could do a quick little graph. So x squared minus four is the parent function of quadratics, the parabola shifted down four units. Uh, the x-intercepts would be plus or minus two. And so it looks something like this. So there's y equals x squared minus 4. And then negative x squared plus 4 is going to be shifted up 4 units, but it's going to open down. It would have the exact same uh, x-intercepts, which will be important in terms of building this integral. Uh, so this is y equals negative x squared plus 4. And we can find the area of this region right here between those two curves. And so what we did was we can integrate this one along the x-axis, but the area is equal to the integral starting at negative two and finishing it up at positive two, which happens to be where those functions intersect. So we could have actually set them equal to each other to find that as well. The upper function is actually this one that I've written down here. If you look at the shaded area, the upper function is negative x squared plus 4 minus the lower function, which is x squared minus 4 dx. So that's an integral that can find that particular area. Now, then there's a couple of things that I'm going to do to simplify this. Let's say we wanted to evaluate this by hand, although we're going to just kind of evaluate it in our calculator here in a second. We've always kind of noticed that zero is a great limit of integration because it's very easy to substitute into antiderivatives. And if, instead of going from negative two to two, what if I just went from zero to two and doubled it? I can rely on the symmetry of what's happening here to do that. So I'm gonna rewrite this as two times the integral from zero to two, just taking zero to two and doubling it. That's gonna find the same area. And if we were to evaluate this by hand, it would make it uh, a lot easier to do. I then can combine like terms, negative x squared minus x squared is negative 2x squared. Plus 4 minus a negative 4 becomes plus 8 dx. And then I am going to go ahead and evaluate it uh, in my calculator, although that would have made it a lot easier to do. Uh, so I would go to math 9, go from 0 to 2 of negative 2x squared plus 8 dx. And then I want to double that answer. And so our area ends up equaling, once I double it, 64 thirds. And that's what you would have got if you had done it by hand. The thirds would have come from taking the antiderivative of something squared. So that's a great process for finding functions that intersect at exactly two points like this one did. Uh, but we can also use this same concept and maybe more integrals to find the area between functions that intersect at more than two points. So whenever we have this situation, and you can kind of see it graphically here on this first example, what happens is the um, upper function, when we want to build that integral, upper minus lower, it sometimes changes what's the upper and lower function. So we have this uh, area between the line y equals 2, which is this horizontal line, and this really pretty cubic function right here. We're going to write an expression containing definite integrals that will find the area between these two functions. We're not even going to evaluate it. We're just going to try to write this expression. So the area that we're trying to find is this area right there. And there's two regions of area. So we're going to find it with two integrals. So the first integral you can see is going to go from 1 to 3. So our first integral will be the integral from 1 to 3. The upper function is this cubic function, and it'll be minus the lower function, too. So x cubed 
minus 9x squared plus 23x minus 13 minus my lower function, which is 2. So this expression finds this area right there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to simply add it to the expression that's going to find this area. Now, this would all be one line of work, but as you can see, it's going to get kind of busy here. So we would add this to the integral from 3 to 5. And then what changed here from 3 to 5 is that now the horizontal line y equals 2 is my upper function. So it's going to be 2 minus my lower function is now this cubic function, x cubed minus 9x squared plus 23x minus 13 dx. That's an integral that would find the area between these two functions. We could either evaluate it in our calculator or if we were feeling really ambitious, that is something that we could integrate uh, by hand. So here's the basic outline of the process you're trying to do here. If we're trying to do this without technology, because we're going to do an example here, uh, you can see y equals 2 cosine of x and y equals 1 on the interval negative 2 to 2. And we're going to do this without a calculator here. Uh, so the things that we need to kind of consider is where do the functions intersect? Where do the functions intersect? And we can find that by setting the functions equal to each other. So f of x would be equal g of x. And then we would solve that equation. The reason why we need to know where the functions intersect is because that ends up being, if you go back to the example we just did, that ends up being how we kind of build our limits of integration. The other thing that we have to consider is which function is greater on each interval. You know that you need to do the upper minus the lower function, and so you would want to know which function is greater on that particular interval. So let's write an expression. Again, we're not going to evaluate it. That finds the total area of the regions bound by the functions y equals 2 cosine of x and y equals 1 on the interval negative 2 to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do a graph here so we can kind of at least see what we have. Uh, y equals 1, that's the easy one to graph. That's just the horizontal line that goes through 1. Y equals 2 cosine of x. So uh, the amplitude of this cosine graph will be 2. So instead of starting at 1, it's starting at 2. And then it's going to have its x-intercepts at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, if you think about where cosine is 0. We are on the interval negative 2 to 2. Uh, let me do this here in the first quadrant. So it's going to have, you know that the cosine graph kind of has this. Its x-intercept is pi over 2, uh, which if you think is pi as being 3.14 over 2, it's a little bit bigger than 1.5. So its x-intercept would be right around here. Same thing uh, over here on the negative x-axis. And so the cosine graph kind of looks like this. And we're doing this on the interval from negative 2 to 2. So really, I can kind of stop my cosine graph right there. But what I end up with is how do I find the area between these functions from negative 2 to 2? So I have this top piece right here. And then I have these two side pieces. And so you're going to look at this and say, OK, we're going to build this using three uh, integrals in order to find this area. So our first integral, I'm going to put this down here at the bottom because we've still got a little bit of work to do before we build it. It starts at negative 2, and it stops right here. And we need to figure out where right here is. And to do that, we're actually going to take these two functions and set them equal to each other. So 2 cosine of x equals 1 is going to happen where cosine of x is equal to one half and so x is equal to the inverse cosine of one half and if you think about uh, your trig values where does cosine equal one half well it occurs at pi over three and also down in quadrant four if i do negative angles which i need to kind of be considering here it also does it at negative pi over three 
And that kind of graphically checks out with, we have a pretty good graph here. Negative pi over three would be just a little bit to the left of negative one. And so that's actually where they intersect. So our definite integral is gonna be from negative two to negative pi over three. So that's getting this little region here. It starts at negative two, it ends at negative pi over three. For this little interval, one is bigger than two cosine of x. So we would have one minus two cosine of x dx. Plus, our next interval will go from negative pi over three to pi over three. On this interval, the cosine function is greater, so it would be two cosine of x minus one. And then lastly, we would go from pi over three to two of, in this interval, one goes back to being the greater function, so it would be one minus two cosine of x dx. And you're gonna notice as this, uh, gets kind of more complex, especially as we get into 5C. Sometimes the question is just going to have you write the integral that could be used to find the area. We could put that into our calculator uh, if we needed to find that particular area. But the objective sometimes kind of is more, can you actually build the integral rather than can you evaluate it? All right, let's take a look at one where we do use technology now, uh, because sometimes we need the calculator to determine both the points of intersection and also it allows us to analyze which function is greater on any given interval. And then of course the calculator can also be used to evaluate integrals. So using a graphing tool, we're gonna find the area bound by the graphs of y equals one plus two x plus e to the negative two x. And we're gonna then find it between that quartic function of x to the fourth minus 6.5 x squared plus six x plus two. All right, so in my calculator, uh, I need to go to y equals, let me get my calculator cleared out here. I still have that tangent function from the previous videos. So when we go to y equals, uh, we need to type in this function right here, one plus two x plus e raised to the negative two x. So there's my first function, it's gonna trace in blue. And then I have x to the fourth, uh, minus 6.5 x squared plus 6 x plus 2. And now I can take a look at the graph here. So it's going to graph this function that has that exponential piece first. And you can see it kind of takes off like an exponential after a while. And then it's going to graph this quartic function uh, right there. And you can see we end up with really two separate areas where this is happening. So I'm gonna kind of adjust the window here to make sure that we can kind of see what we wanna see. So I'm gonna go from negative one to four. Uh, and then I think on the Y, if I go from zero to six, we're probably gonna be able to see this pretty well. So again, there's that exponential function. Here comes the quartic function. And you can see very clearly I get two areas that I'm gonna find. So this area right here added to this area. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna find where they intersect. They intersect three times. So I'm gonna to go to second trace, find the intersections. I'm gonna move as far to the left here, or as close to this left intersection as I can. And I see that my first intersection occurs. Uh, that is the calculator equivalent of X equals zero. So it's gonna be from zero to now I need to find this intersection right here. And you can see it goes to 0 0.860. So 0 0.860. I need to know the upper minus the lower function for that region. And you can kind of see the upper function is actually the polynomial function. So the upper function is x to the fourth minus 6.5x squared uh, plus 6x plus 2 minus the lower function was the one that had the exponential piece, 1 plus 2x plus e to the negative 2x dx. So this expression finds that first 
area. We want to add it to, we know we're going to pick up the next one at 0 0.860. We already found that intersection. And now we just need to find this intersection right here to figure out where it stops accumulating area. And then as you can also see, the upper and lower functions switch here. So this intersection occurs at 2.088. And then, like I said, this is now the upper function, 1 plus 2x plus e to the negative 2x minus x to the fourth minus 6.5x squared plus 6x plus 2 dx. That expression right there will find the area. So we needed to find the limits, and we kind of were able to use the graph to establish what was the upper function and the lower function. And if we can type all of this into our calculator correctly, uh, we will get an answer of 2.760. So let's see if we can get this in the calculator correctly here. So we will go to uh, math 9 for our integral, 0 to 0 0.860 of x to the fourth minus 6.5x squared plus 6x plus 2 minus, uh, and then we will add it to, or sorry, we will subtract 1 plus 2x plus e to the negative 2x. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I may or may not have used too many parentheses there. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. So this first integral is this value right here. And the reason why I did that is because I want to make sure I type that in. I should get a positive answer. Uh, and you can see that I did. So I'm going to add that value now to my second integral, 0 0.860 to 2.088. The upper function, 1 plus 2x plus e to the negative 2x minus the lower function now is that x to the fourth minus 6.5x squared plus 6x plus 2 dx. And we get an answer of what we thought we would, so I was able to type it into the calculator correctly, of 2.760. Now that you can see why a lot of times the objective is just simply can you set this up. That was a lot of work just to get the numerical answer. So you're going to see a lot of questions here moving forward throughout the rest of domain five, where the objective really is just setting up the integrals because the answer uh, can be found just simply using technology.